Leanna Jolson refuses to be categorized as a podcast. Um, this is going to be a really fucking long podcast, so you can settle the fuck in with a big cup of tea, maybe do some knitting as you listen. Uh, this is one of those ones that is better accompanied with pictures and diagrams and all the shit. So if you want any of the deets, go to leonidawson.com forward slash photo shoot and you'll find it all there. So today I'm going to be taking you behind the scenes of a business branding photo shoot and also talk to you a little bit about preventing autistic burnout as well. So I spent a day about a week and a half ago working as hard as I'll ever work for the next year or so. I had a full day photo shoot. It was glorious. It was wonderful. I can't wait to share the results with you. They are bonkadoodles, brilliant photos, and even more Leone than anything I've ever done before. So I wanted to share with you a bit of the behind the scenes for you so you know all the details to how I organize and pull these kinds of shoots off. So this is about 3,000 words. Um, so whether you're contemplating a photo shoot or interested in behind the scenes business stuff or want to know how I work with ASD, I hope this is really useful for you. So firstly, pro tip for neurodivergence and ASD humans, I actually find writing out and cataloging events helps my brain and my body process them faster. Sometimes I do that in my journal, sometimes I do it by spreadsheet, sometimes I do it by blogging about it podcasting about it, like writing the narrative, capturing details, processing photographs, it all helps my brain feel calmer and less stimulated and allows me to kind of churn through the backlog of sensory inputs as well. So I thought I'd give you like an overview of all the different kinds of photo shoots that I've done over the years uh, for my business and my life, just because I am a cataloging motherfucker. <laughs> so, um, since 2004, my husband has taken, took he took all of the photos for a really long time in my business and I'd still corral him into taking shoots from time to time. We've had a few digital SLR cameras, we love photography and we've even photographed some weddings together when I was dabbling in professional photography in the olden days. Um, and I'm just so grateful that he's captured me at so many times throughout my business and life journey. If you'd like to see some photos that he's done, plus all the other photographers I'm going to mention, go to leonidawson.com forward slash photo shoot and you'll see everything in there. In 2008, we had an engagement photo shoot with Rebecca McLean. McLean. In 2010 and 2011, our awesome friend, Ray, uh, and she's our, she was our doula as well, uh, Rachel London, did a pregnancy photo shoot for us. She photographed our birth and we even flew her up to photograph our wedding as well. 2011, my wonderful friend in Proserpine, Trish McNeil, did a couple of short photo shoots for me and for my little family. 2014, after we had our second daughter in Cairns, we had a beach photo shoot with Peppermint Lane and we had a rainforest photo shoot with Chanel Barron, which were both amazing. And they were a combination of family photography and portraits that I could use for my business. I can't even remember why I did two shoots in one year. I think basically it was because um, I had <laughs> just had a baby and I just wanted a lot of photos and I'm so fucking glad I did. Um, in 2015 and 2016 uh, in Canberra I did a photo shoot with Tracy Lee Photography a couple of times and she also photographed my conference and we also had videographers at the conference as well. In 2017 I hired Screen Car Craft in Canberra to create a sales video and they also included some still photography in there and I wrote about that process in full in a blog post called How to Create a Pro Sales Video if you want to go check that out. 2018 I did a quick 20 minute shoot with my rad friend Nick Yardley from Living Studio and then in 2019 I did a branding photo shoot with Michelle from Eyes of Love Photography. I wrote about kind of the behind the scenes of that day on my website as well if you go to behind the scenes how I did a business photo shoot google that you know Dawson <laughs> you can find it otherwise if you go to leonidawson.com forward slash photo shoot you'll be able to find all the fucking links there. Anyway, uh, and I've also included the link from when Michelle, the photographer, uh, did a blog post about what it was like working with me from her end. So, 
ta-da! Enjoy my anal retentiveness. Uh, and then I put together like a compendium of photos from those photo shoots like over the years. Amazing. And what's even more hilarious is that you see the progression from me having very long mermaid hair to then having short pixie hair to then having very long mermaid hair to then having short pixie hair again. So it feels like I don't really have any in-betweens. Of course, I had growing out periods, but it's like all or nothing for me on the hair front, quite literally. (laughs) Anyway, uh, our last shoots photos in 2019 with Michelle from Eyes of Love, they have lasted us a full two years and they branded my new website, this podcast, blog posts and all of my new programs including Sales Star, Money Manifesting and Multiple Streams of Income, 40 Days to Create and Sell Your E-Course, 40 Days to Finish Your Book and more. We were definitely starting to run out though. My assistant was starting to want to look at some new photos and I needed some new photos for all the new programs and products that I have in my brain that are just ready to come out. So let me talk about what I wanted to do differently this time compared to last time and what I wanted to do the same. I knew I wanted to use the same photographer as last time, Michelle from Eyes of Love. This is what happens when you aren't moving across the country all the time. You can already use the people that you know and love. Like, pro tip, guys. Plus, it's, I mean, it's really hard to go past Mish. She is an expert in branding, in brand photography for online entrepreneurs. Most of all, though, she's an absolute earth angel of a human. And I love her and her husband, Jacko. And I love jo- Jacko so much that I conned him into bringing him onto the shoot as well, just so we could do an awkward prom photo together. If you'd like to see that, leonidawson.com forward slash photo shoot. We fucking nailed it. Me and Jacko kind of have a bromance. We really do. <laughs> Uh, Now, in terms of the venue, the last venue, I used a very white, plain, contemporary Airbnb, and I took just a van load of pillows, blankets, artworks, and decorative crap to make it as Leonified as possible. This time, I took a different approach. I managed to stumble upon a venue online that looked ridiculously creative and Leonified already. I booked and I hoped for the best and also had kind of like weird fever anxiety dreams that I had made yet another one of those terrible Airbnb mistakes that we've all made from time to time. So thank goodness my fever dreams were in vain because what we found when we turned up was beyond my wildest hopes, honestly. We booked Noosa Valley Manor Boutique Boutique B&B and it was like everything and more. Like incredibly stunning design in exactly my kind of maximalist, creative, colourful kookiness plus amazing gardens and so many beautiful nooks to shoot in. The very best of hosts and they also cooked us a delicious Italian feast for lunch. No, this is not sponsored. Yes, I fucking paid them. They had no idea who I was. Uh, It was fucking amazing. And me and Maddie, my assistant for the day, we just kept on looking at each other and just screaming because it was all so very, very beautiful. We are both now going to attempt to move in and become part of the furniture because it was just that great. Um, for hair and makeup, I now personally just budget in for a hair and makeup person to sort me in the morning just to save me from having to kind of stab at my face with a mascara wand blind without my glasses on. And I always request natural looking makeup on shoots to look, you know, like me in real life, but less washed out on camera. Last time I used Valentina Pintus, who was awesome, and I tried to book her again, but she already had a wedding on that day. Um, So I ended up hiring Sean Howard, who is a friend and colleague of Valentina's, and she was bloody brilliant as well. We laughed like terrors the whole time, and I totally wish we could have hung out the whole day. She's a dead set hottie. I told her that I loved her already because I move fast, and I'm definitely going to force her into joining my coven of hags (laughs) because that's how I roll, guys. Um, Now, outfits. I tend to use the same outfits over and over and over again in photo shoots, just like all turquoise blues with dashes or lavender and fuchsia pops. And this time I wanted to go just completely bonk doodles with rainbow and color as well. 
I picked up a few duster jackets from local boutiques, some t-shirts and jewellery and made my first and last purchase on Wish.com, a ridiculous full-length rainbow tutu. And then because I'm 100% anal, I made a Pinterest board just to lay out exactly what outfit options I had with every piece of like clothing item I had with the shoot on there. I still found, however, that my brain was like still trying to make like outfit puzzle pieces fit together at night time while I was trying to go to sleep. So I found it quite therapeutic to then draw out most of my outfits in my journal as well. If you would like to see evidence of the things that I get up to, Leonie Dawson got from photoshoot.com. What's that photo shoot? That's where it is. You can find it somewhere. Look, here's the thing, guys. If you give up social media, you can have so much free time that you can undertake hilarious projects like this too. Now, last time I had Ellie Oster as an assistant and she was brilliant and I knew then I would always hire an assistant on photo shoots. They make life so much fucking easier on the day. I'll talk about more of that in a second. Ellie wasn't free this time because she works full time now, so I hired our mutual mate, Maddie Beaufort, instead. Maddie was bloody awesome. And here's the thing, like I reckon anyone with a drama background works brilliantly on shoot days because they're already really well versed in stage production and getting shit sorted for the next shoot. So uh, it's fucking bonza. And Mads for me, like it's hard to say how much I love Mads. Mads is my perfect and scrumptious younger person, muse, mentor and friend. And I think I feel about her the same way that Sark felt about a younger Sabrina Ward Harrison. I just feel so protective of her and completely delighted by her as well. Now, I always produce a rough schedule on for how the photo shoots will go as well and then give it to my assistant and my photographer to follow because then it just kind of outsources that part of my brain. I don't really have to think too much. So if you'd like to see an example of the schedule and actually download the full assistant brief that I created for Maddie, go to leonidawson.com forward slash photo shoot and you'll find that. Um, Basically, uh, we started at 8 a.m., Hair and makeup was finished by 10 o'clock. We could start shooting and then finish up by four-ish, five-ish um, and take a break for lunch. Um, and we we stuck to that. We thought we may potentially go to the beach in the late afternoon to get like that golden hour of sunlight. But I was too exhausted by the end of the day. No, thank you. Uh, then I put together a prop list as well. Um, and usually that includes a lot of journals, pens, a large art pad, laptops, iPads, phones, piles of books, mugs, paintbrushes, art, all the kinds of shit. And I also got Maddie to procure some large balloons from Big W and uh, bunches of loose flowers as well. Um, and I got some really like oversized foil balloons from Big W, ones that can be refilled over and over for my kids endless amusement and like I remember like paying for it and the lady was like well this is gonna make a very special birthday party for a little girl and I said oh no it's for a photo shoot she goes oh how great you're a child photographer and I was like no it's a professional business shoot starring me (laughs) so special It was worth it. Between that and my stupendous rainbow skirt, I felt like I was living my inner child's best life. Righto. I'm going to have to like pause here. My husband just come out and brought me a sign that says time to go because I have an osteopath appointment to go fix my fucking back. Um, But I will be back to add shit to this. But if you're wondering why Leonie's voice sounds different, that will be why. All right. I missed you already. I'll be back in a second. Okay. Bye. Oh, righto, I'm back, love onions. Yes, that is what the term of endearment of the day is. I love onions. Take it, use it, spread it. Everyone needs it. <laughs> uh, I am back. Um, firstly, I wanted to say, if you, like me, uh, don't have the executive functioning to understand how time works, you absolutely should get yourself a husband like mine who's very anxious about time um, and who keeps me 
keeps me on time for things and considers where I need to be and uh, gives me appropriate amount of time to get ready. So um, thanks to him and his uh, little time to go sign before I managed to get to there in with four minutes early <laughs> thank you so much you're so welcome it's interesting when we get reports back from school um, they always include how many days late there is and um, you can always tell how many days I have done the kid drop off by myself because that's the amount of days that we're late <laughs> luckily those days are few and far between like maybe once or twice a term do I actually have to do it by myself so look guys if you have poor executive functioning just get yourself somebody who doesn't have poor executive functioning when it comes to time and uh, they will support you through that endeavor <laughs> always makes me laugh when I go away as well I know I've gone off on a tangent and I don't care and I don't think you care either um <laughs> Um, because if you did care, you were so in the wrong place. Oh, you poor love. Anyway, no, when I go away on on like holidays by myself and stuff, like I have to call Chris like a few times a day at least, uh, just to ask him like how to resolve situations. Because I get I get stuck in underground car park and don't understand how to get out. I don't know how doors lock. I don't get how to stop. A toilet from running I don't know how to turn TVs on um, you know basic basic human and adulting things I not good at and so Chris becomes my human help desk bless his heart um, anyway I've had a fabulous afternoon I went and got my crack and backed um, and feeling so much better because I have hypermobility my joints are too loose but it means that my just everything's pops out of place much much easy much more easily um oh i need to get the dog before she pees inside the house hold tight come on dog outside don't no don't just stand there staring at me outside oh okay turn around and go back sure my word um anyway basically as soon as something f flops out then the rest of my back and neck and shoulders flop out as well and I become in great pain in great pain right so what we were talking about we were talking about the photo shoot so you might be wondering why do I have an assistant on photo shoots and here's the thing like when the B&B owner introduced herself to us I introduced her to Maddie, my assistant, and she said, oh, you must be the makeup artist then. And I laughed and said, no, this is my assistant. And she did double take and she's like, gosh, you really are fancy then. And that makes me laugh because yes, having a personal assistant for a photo shoot seems like a very posh thing to do. But here's why I always budget to have one. I've done photo shoots without an assistant before, but when you have an assistant, you absolutely can get through more photos and sets faster because they can preemptively organize and set things up for you and the photographer and manage all the props and clothes, etc. And if I was running for stuff myself, I'd be far sweatier, which is a real problem when you do photo shoots in tropical Queensland. And I'd be far more flustered and not as able to do my job as much, which is to have a great time and show the camera every glorious angle of me. So I need to get amazing photos that celebrate me and my identity and my work in the world, knowing that they're going to be fodder for me to use and create projects for the next couple of years. Assistance helped me to do that. So a couple of days before the shoot, I took Maddie out to lunch and presented her with a little brief of the day. And the assistance brief included things like the contact details of all suppliers involved, a schedule of the day, and a checklist of tasks for her to do before and during the day. Now, if you want to get a copy of that, if you go to leonidawson.com forward slash photo shoot, you can get the PDF. Um, so you see exactly what I lay out. Now here's the so here's the checklist that I gave her for doing before the photo shoot. So night before she needed to do balloons pick up, she needed to pick up flowers, she needed to go buy supplies for a charcuterie board, and um, she needed to buy some 
ginger kombucha and four liters of sparkling water. And then the morning of um, before the photo shoot started, I needed her to go to my favorite smoothie store, which is Raw Energy, and um, get her to pick up a, a specific smoothie. So that helps me. It just saves me running around the town before, like the day before, and which means that she got supplies for snacks and drinky poos and other props, and that was awesome. And I had to do less work, which is great because we're trying to get me to stop burning out. And then um, by getting her to pick up my favorite smoothie, one gives me really good energy for the day. Uh, and it also saved an extra 20 minutes on my day. Hilariously though, look, I have a very specific way of asking for my smoothie. And when Maddie asked for it, they actually said, right, is this for Leone by any chance? Like, clearly, <laughs> clearly. I am a lady of habit. I go to the same smoothie shop at least four times a week at the same time in the morning and ask for the exact same smoothie made the exact particular way that I like it. What can I say? I am a creature of habit and it's a fucking great habit, guys. Now, in terms of her day of checklist, um, I got her to unpack the car and supplies, take care of the care and feeding of Leonie, which is reminding me to eat and drink during the day, encouraging breaks when needed, looking after the wardrobe by organizing outfits and jewelry, lay, laying out and styling outfits, supervising my outfits, hair and makeup while being photographed. Uh, styling and organizing areas for the next photo shoot, managing props, helping um, me and Michelle with ensuring that all required shots were taken. So there was a list, a shot list of what I wanted taken. And I also wanted to do some modeling in a couple of shots for when like I wanted to do some kind of like, I'm coaching someone, I'm talking shit with someone kind of stuff. And then the, the final part was cleaning and organizing uh, the Airbnb back into the original state. Now that was the list that I gave her, but she also ended up spending a large part of the day holding photographer lights at precarious angles in search of that elusive perfect lighting. We probably wouldn't have been able to get a decent amount of the indoor shots that we wanted without her. And also like getting her to look after the lights and make for an extraordinary number of light worker jokes. <laughs> worth it right there, worth it right there, my loves. And like, I can't emphasize enough how important the care and feeding of Leone part is either. Like, I actually do find it really difficult to get enough food or water in on big days like that. I get pretty fixated on the job at hand and I don't really notice my physical needs at all. And then by the end of the day, I'm dehydrated and woozy. So I really told Mads, like, you need to mother hand me into drinking more drinks and snacks. And she did. Uh, and she also put together the most incredible charcuterie board of snacks. Um, I told her she had to make sure it had cakes on there as well. And it did. And yes, I did eat them all. <laughs> now, dealing with the photo shoots and other big events as an autistic person, I thought I would share this with you. Um, one, in case you're neurodivergent like me, you may have a neurodivergent person in your life. Um, and also, even if you don't, Maybe this would just be useful for you to understand how um, people with neurodivergence can experience the world. It's not how everyone with ASD experiences it, but I will share from my experience what it's like. So how I describe my experience of autism is that my brain records images and sounds and smells in kind of like 4K video resolution whereas neurotypical brains record in kind of a lower definition. So this means I record, record more detail, but it takes much longer for my brain to process it, just like a computer takes longer to process a high definition video. So that's just how I see and feel my own autism, but you know, amazingly science and research do back it up. People with autism can potentially see motion faster, autistic brains work faster and have more visual processing power. If you want links to those articles, head to leonidawson.com forward slash photo shoot. So in terms of prepping for the day, there's a few things that I need to do to kind of help my brain and my energy 
stabilize and not get so burnt out. So creating the schedule, the brief, the Pinterest boards of outfits, etc. It all helps my brain to catalog what's coming so that it's easier to digest it when it does. And for weeks leading up to my photo shoot, I had on my daily to-do list to prevent burnout. So that meant a lot of time with my weighted blanket, clearing my schedule and doing a bunch of other things to mitigate my sensory overwhelm. Uh, in terms of disclosing to others, I also talked to Michelle and Maddie beforehand about how we could take care of my autism on the day and they were fully supportive. Michelle was really happy to work around my energy levels, take regular breaks and do a shorter shoot if I needed to on the day. And you know, I was just honest with her and I was like, I really want to do a big photo shoot with you and I really want that amount of photos but I'm not sure how I'm going to actually energetically process that. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm actually going to manage that or not. Um, so it was useful to kind of like preemptively problem solve how that might work and give myself permission um, to like you know go time out I'm done <laughs> no thank you kind regards best wishes <laughs> um, so for me like I have taken to disclosing being ASD whenever I work with a service professional like massage therapists and osteopaths and hairdressers and so far like everyone's very accommodating and they like learning what works for me and what doesn't and I try to make sure that I tell everyone tell them that like everyone with ASD is different so it's a matter of them asking if they can do something first before they do it and you know what like I, I kind of think that strikes me as like a, a good model of consent for all humans really so with Sean who was doing my hair and makeup I disclosed being ASD uh, to her right at the start and I told her that I feel really uncomfortable with a lot of smells and that I didn't want much stuff on my face because it makes me feel very uncomfortable and she was great she would get me to sniff like potions before she applied them to make sure that I was okay with the smell of it and like here's the thing like I recognize not everyone feels comfortable or safe disclosing their personal details with service professionals I'm happy to do it because I feel pretty rad in my own skin and I have great support and I feel safe to do so and you know what if I can raise awareness as I go that'd probably be helpful to others you know so if you've ever met, met me you would possibly not notice that I have ASD like I can be wildly extroverted uh, I can make eye contact I can hug people and talk shit for hours uh, people who are used to dealing with a lot of ASD people um, do tend to pick up that I have ASD because of, you know, the, the personality, the kooks, the kooks, the magnificent kooks. But, you know, mostly I can mask and pretend to be somewhat normal, you know, but it doesn't come naturally, right? So this is the thing, like I'm not faking it. That's my personality at heart. But the social stuff is something that I've had to learn very intentionally and conscientiously. And it takes a huge cognitive load for me, a cognitive load that neurotypicals don't with social situations. It just comes more naturally to them. I can fare okay at masking for most of the day for a big event like this, or if I'm at a conference, etc. Like, I'm excited for new people, new experiences, looking at pretty things, like doing the things, much fun. However, at a certain point, it definitely becomes difficult to function. It's like my brain has recorded so much data and detail that it begins to chug. Like, here's the thing, like, I never used to understand why I couldn't do as much as other people um, in terms of being out there in the world and being as social and doing a lot of travel and conferences and that kind of stuff. Um, I didn't understand why it took me so long to recover from those things. But now I've got a diagnosis. I know like this is who I am and that's okay. This is just the conditions of this particular makeup. It comes with a, a fuckload of blessings and I'm very, I feel really lucky to be autistic. Um, and it also comes with a cost and it's a cost that I'm willing to pay. Um, that That's for me personally. Other people will experience their autism completely differently, but there's things that I can do to try and help that and, and mitigate it and give myself the allowance and just go, yeah, that's how I am and that's okay. Now, in terms of what it feels like when my brain starts to chug, 
um, is I start losing vision around the edges of my eyes. It kind of feels like tunnel vision. My brain becomes increasingly fuzzier. It's harder to understand what people are saying and I become a lot quieter and slower. Um, I know Michelle at the end of the day like asked me something about how I wanted like the images processes and the selecting and stuff like that and I was I didn't understand what she was saying by that point and I was like yeah sounds good <laughs> sure um and then I emailed her the next day and I was like hey babes you know how we talked about something um, vaguely about this topic I actually have no memory of what it is and I don't know what we were talking about when we were talking about it because I was like broken by that point so could you repeat it to me and explain again and she was like ha sure let's totally cool um she did and I finally got it so like you should never feel like shame for having to get people to repeat stuff it's totally fine you get to advocate for you and for your needs and if anyone is ever a dick about it that actually just means you're a fucking dick of a person because everybody who is like a good person is like super happy to like nobody's ever given me shit and if they did give me shit mama barely only would come after them would come after them anyway uh i warned mitch about like two o'clock that my energy was starting to wane and that we likely wouldn't make it to the beach for final shots and then i had enough of me just to get some more set changes in at the bnb but then we need to wrap it up and she was totally groovy totally accommodating so we got the shots in packed up which usually takes at least 30 minutes we high-fived each other and we headed off now pretty much as soon as i'm in my car driving home my autism just is in full overdrive after a big day like that like i can keep it up in public but as soon as i'm by myself or with my family my brain starts trying to backlog like process the backlog of information that it's received so if you can imagine a laptop that's trying to render a really long video or like trying to push InDesign to spout out a print ready version of a book like the laptop just begins whirring heating up and it can't do much else except for that one task so for me that means I become either mute or close to it if I do speak it can be slightly slurred and I will be like this for at least the rest of the day and will be quieter for days to come afterwards. If I've come into any smells that I don't like, I usually discard all of my clothes at the door and go have a shower straight away. <laughs> when it hurts, my kids have seen me just so I walk in, just take all my clothes off at the front door and be like, I'm done, the smell, smell. And it doesn't even have to be like innocuous smells. Like somebody could just be wearing like, essential oils or something and give me a hug and because it's not a smell I've chosen for myself no likey no likey at all uh, now I want to say like my husband and kids are not concerned by any of this like they know that I've had a big day and I just need to repair before I return to being myself and they're like oh okay mum's had a big day just like if any of them have had a big day we know just like to ease up and allow them time to decompress and be with themselves and that that's totally okay and normal uh, I also usually head to bed super early usually 7 p.m. but when I'm overstimulated I can't go to sleep even though I'm exhausted so I usually put a weighted blanket over me in an attempt to kind of pin myself in place my brain will race and be very very hyperactive and it usually takes at least two hours for my brain to calm down enough to actually find fall asleep so i kind of take that into account like all right well i'll go to bed this time but i know i'm just going to be laying there my brain's going to be like woo, 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 uh, for at least two hours and after a big day like i can absolutely sleep for 12 hours in one block my brain feels so much better after I've slept overnight and it definitely helps with clearing the sensory overwhelm quite a bit as well. Um, it will take me at least at least three days for me to process a big day, sometimes much more. Um, if like a three day conference that I used to run, that likely like the recovery period probably took about a month for me to do that. Um, and so like I was always interested 
when I did like a network marketing company, they were like, well, you could just do this, like come to this conference. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, I'm going to be fucking wrecked for a month after that. No, I can't. No, you're saying it's only two days, but that to me is a month. That's a month. Um, so it's just, you know, it's just that longer recovery time and that's okay. That's more than okay. Um, in the days after having a big experience as well, I'm much more likely to get breakthrough anxiety, even though I am medicated. It just takes time for my nervous system to settle again. And I do find that like writing, journaling, blogging, making art, anything to document the process helps me to process all of my feelings and experiences faster. So that's why I've like wrote this very long blog post and recorded this podcast. Um, if you want to go have a look at like the raw unedited proof shots that have come through, you're most welcome to. Again, leonidawson.com forward slash photo shoot in case you haven't got a fucking idea yet. <laughs> but um, you'll see all of the photos being rolled out over coming months and years. I just thought I'd give you a tiny peek now. I want to stress these are completely unedited and straight out of the camera. In the photography business, they call those proofs. Often photographers will give you proofs for you to choose your favorites from for editing. And it usually takes a couple of weeks for photographers to present the edited photos to you. Mish did send me a few fo edited photos like faster just so I can get my grabby little fucking hands on them faster and start making stuff with them like my um, adorable get in before prices double sign if you want to go check that out. Fuck, I love the dress I'm in on that. It's just rad. Now, after all this, you might be wondering like, are photos that worth the time and expense? And for me, yes, like they are for me at this stage of my business. I use the photos for all my new programs, my websites and some blog posts. Having a great library of photos is a really important part of my creative and business approach now. Does every business need a full day photo shoot? Fuck no. When I was starting out, I got photos taken in the backyard by my husband. This one that I've just done was the biggest photo shoot that I've done for my business in ever. <laughs> And I've been doing this for 17 years now. I'm going to plan to use these for at least the next two years of programs and offerings. So I hope this is helpful. Whether you're contemplating a photo shoot or interested in behind the scenes business stuff, or you want to know how I work with ASD, I hope this has been insightful. And of course, don't forget, um, big, big, big thing this month, my prices are doubling uh, on 30th of April for three of my most popular programs, Money Manifesting in Multiple Streams of Income, 40 Days to a Finished Book, and 40 Days to Create and Sell Your E-Course. So make sure you get in now to save a shit ton of dollars. If you go to leonidawson.com forward slash double, you'll find out all the goodies there. All right, my loves, I love you all. Oh, and seriously, do not, do not. Do not email me on 1st of May and say that you forgot to buy during the sale and ask if we could just like extend it just for one more day for you because the answer is no, my loves. No, because I've like told you 30 days in advance. I'm trying to be super helpful here. 30 days, that's what you've got. Do not forget. If you're thinking of doing it, just get in now so that you don't forget, please. Please, kind regards and thank you. All right, I love you. Have an amazing day. You've got this. I believe in you.